Hello YouTube, this is Nairo Misfortune, and today we are going to be taking a look at Supreme Commander 2. If you're not familiar, this is a video where I talk about the game, the strategy game in particular, and then review it so that you guys can have a better understanding of what the game is, and hopefully that will aid you in picking the, your games better. So let's take a look at Supreme Commander. This is a game that I have been playing for a long while. I'm very familiar with it. So as always, basically with most strategy games you have a campaign, a skirmish, and a multiplayer and some options. And there's actually a replay mode which is quite important. I like replay modes. Alright, so let's just jump in, create a game, a skirmish. We can play against a uh, any kind of AI, we can even set it to custom. We can set um, any kind of settings, so let's say normal. We can also say the type of AI it will be, so for example, we can set it to land. And then we can uh, cheating options, that is basically what AI does, it cheats. So we can set it, right now it's at zero, we can set it to let's say 20, 23% whatever you like <clears throat> and um, I'll just set it to normal just for uh, the purposes of this video and then we can also give it Intel no bonus and then we can also set its behavior to engage uh, the ty uh, what type of enemy so I'm just gonna set I'll leave that all at normal once again for the purposes of this video I'm gonna select my favorite things. I'm going to put a sort of 1v1 map. This is basically the standard 1v1 map. And then we have the options, the game options. First you have the victory condition. Assassination is the main objective is to destroy your opponent's commander and this is the standard for Supreme Commander 2 in tournaments and in uh, normal games alike. Supremacy is also another popular option but in most people's opinions it is inferior to assassination supremacy you have to wipe out all of your opponent's buildings. And infinite war is basically you keep on fighting no matter what happens unless you die of course but I, th I think even then you stay in the game and this is used uh, primarily to test out your strat strategies in a skirmish you don't really need this nobody really uses it uh, so we're just gonna leave that on assassination spawn position fixed or random obviously you can select your uh, spawn position here by clicking on it and rush timer is uh, where you cannot leave there's a certain area marked up around your spawn where you cannot leave for a certain amount of minutes and you can set that here. Fog of War is basically um, what you're able to see just like in other strategy games. The game speed, the standard is normal. Uh, many people argue that fast is better but it, it's just not true. Yeah, people say that it solves lag problems, it does not. It's completely false. And also they argue that if you're better you would be able to micro on fast so if you if you prefer normal you're a sort of a noob and that's quite in reverse in all honesty because on fast all you need to do is spam out units and that basically will work so we're just gonna leave that on normal and then you have your exclusions you can set it to no experimentals no air units no land units no naval units, no mass conversions, no nukes, no etc. Um, all, all those settings are available and actually I'm going to change this to adjustable just for the purposes of this video so I can speed up and slow down the game in order to show you how it plays basically. So there are three factions in Supreme Commander 2. It is Cyber, UEF and uh, Aeon. If you're not familiar with these factions and you've played other games like St Starcraft or even Red Alert, it's basically humans, Zerg, 
and Protoss. It's basically like that. Or it is um, uh, US, uh, Soviets, and uh, the Uprising, I think they're called. Anyhow, let's continue. So there's a couple of options that I choose to select in the beginning. Um, first of all is the score screen. It tells you how well you're doing. I haven't built anything, so I don't have any points yet. And then the minimap up here. The clock, and you can, the, the nicest thing about Supreme Commander 2 is that you can zoom in all the way out and then all the way in to see the battle. It helps quite a bit once you have all those units out. So, talking about a bit of the basics, you spawn with a commander and two engineers. The commander obviously builds faster than engineers and it's obviously kind of like your king. You have to protect him in an assassination of course. All that I'm going to be saying in my videos will probably be pertaining to assassination. And yeah, so there, there are two, three basic resources in Supreme Commander 2. There is mass, which you build on these uh, mass points right here. And there is also energy, which you can build anywhere. And there, the final resource is actually research. You get a small amount of research when you start off. Oh, well, just like mass and energy, you get a little bit. But um, it's basically an income, and you can use this research to buy uh, research technology. So, for example, I can. Uh, choose to get this build cost reduction for one point so I will select that and it will start building so next kind of order of uh, things I'm just gonna continue expanding so I can show you um, what this game is about I'm gonna speed that up a bit and then, so obviously there are uh, uh, units in this game, or else it wouldn't be a strategy game really. Um, there's land, and there is air, and there's navy. Now unfortunately I won't be able to obviously show you off, uh, show off navy in this video, but um, navy can be quite fun in this game, especially in large games. And there is also air, so I will get one of those. Please note that this is actually not a any kind of build order that you should be using. I'm just showing you off the game. So the basic units that you start off is basically some sort of tank or basic melee, well not a melee, ranged attack unit, an anti-air unit, and a missile launcher. Now that varies from... Uh, faction to faction but in uh, in its essence it's basically the same air it's a uh, fighter and a bomber uh, that's only UEF however the other factions have a bomber and a fighter combined and then you can unlock units through your research tree so I will want to show you some experimentals so I will I will start heading up the fat boy route and there's all sorts of uh, um, all sorts of research. There is training, which increases uh, your health and damage on your land, air, naval, or structures, or ACU. You can also unlock things like shield, build cost, build time reduction, research a rate increase, mass, increase, mass income increase, uh, and the, this obviously is the biggest difference from uh, faction to faction. So. Let's just continue. I will want to get one of these. I'm just going to continue to expand. And um, show off some of the units in the game. So obviously the, the computer is attacking me. And kind of what I like most about Supreme Commander 2 over Supreme Commander 1 is that you can really micro 
you know, of course you can micro in Supreme Commander 1 as well, but I believe in Supreme Commander 2 the micro is a whole new breed of kind of micro, you know. Um, I'm gonna get some bombers just so I can, just that if I'm not paying attention, which most likely will happen, I can defend things. I'm also going to get a radar, which will allow me to get coverage. So, in my opinion, Spring Commander 2 takes on kind of a brand new uh, approaches to uh, micro and kind of scouting and things like that. Now, I'm actually, he's actually sending a bit of units. I'm going to bomb him. And I'm still heading towards that bad boy, so I'm just gonna get a couple of more factories. And also a quick point, you can reclaim almost anything in this game that has died or even alive. and that will give you mass so whenever things die you should bring up your commander and basically um, reclaim that so you get a bit of more mass and you see micro makes a huge difference in this game the computer was outnumbering me quite a bit quite a bit and I was able to with my micro pull off Snag a win, basically. <clears throat> so I'm going to get some artillery to show you that. Artillery is another key point which makes micro even more exciting and interesting. So as you can see here, the versatility of uh, having these different type of war units such as air and land, together they can work very interestingly, if that's a word. <laughs> so I'm just going to speed this game up again. And I have enough to purchase that fab boy, but I probably don't have enough mass and energy, so I'm going to get one of these, and I'm going to get the factory. I'm going to slow it down here again. And there's a random bot standing here. Of course it's the AI so we don't expect much from it. And then there's also a very nice upgrade on the air, on UEF air called the cluster bomb which allows you to hit more tanks basically in one shot so I'm going to speed this up again and show you the experimental and then we're going to move on to the review segment so let's continue making bombers I don't know why I didn't so let's build our fat boy. We do need a bit more energy for that, however. And then we will be able to... I don't know why he's not capturing that, actually. Yeah, you can capture buildings as well. So that adds a, a sort of another dimension to the game. And the cool thing, again, you can zoom in all the way and see the battle happening which is very epic. Oh, did all my planes die? Probably, because I wasn't watching. <laughs> so here comes the fat boy, and it is a pretty powerful form of artillery. Just don't let it die. And it's basically from a little, very long range it can wipe out pretty much anything given time of course. Oh he got adapters, a very powerful unit for Cybern, but it's fine. We got an experimental and we're going to basically take all of his things out now. 
and we can rebuild on the uh, on the lost Mexus and it will cost me less to rebuild obviously. So now this fab boy can just come in, cover my land units. I can increase my intel range. Now I can see pretty much anything that's happening. My PD is defending right there. And I will basically now roll him. Yep. So that is basically um, Supreme Commander 2 in a nutshell. Kind of how things work in it. I'm just going to increase my damage and kill him, win the game. Now of course if this was a human player this would be way more interesting. And yeah, so when a person actually knows what he's doing and responds in the way that is logical, it, it makes a very interesting online game. my second fat boy and imagine having dozens of experimental units duking it out on the same battlefield so I do need to be careful because Cybern has structure detonate so if I just go in here um, I will most likely get blown up so I'm just gonna target this guy now and he explodes and I get the victory. <clears throat> and obviously after you finish, you get a nice score screen where you can see who got what score. Um, it's all sorts of statistics. You can also save the replay by giving it a name and then you can also upload it to a nice website which it's very ingenious how they do it. I tried to replicate it, but I couldn't. Uh, it shows you every information on the website, uh, game replays. And so this is basically uh, Supreme Commander 2 uh, overview, and now we're going to move on to the review. Alright, so here is my review for Supreme Commander 2. Uh, if you're not familiar on how I rate my games, it is basically um, a 10 point scale with uh, which is broken down basically as follows. Uh, there is a couple of categories that are worth two points. Uh, that is balance, versatility slash replayability, multiplayer and epicness. Those are basically the key things I look in a strategy game. I don't know, maybe you look for something different, but that's how I do it. And also the, there is a couple of bonus points that a game can get, which will allow it to reach 10 out of 10. Or maybe even 11, but the maximum score is of course uh, 10 out of 10. And uh, so, uh, one point each, visuals and design, story and AI. Those are the three um, basically categories that I have. So let's go over Supreme Commander 2 and each one of these categories. Obviously balance is one of the most important things in a strategy game and the reason why I give it a score that I did on the screen there is because, oh well, yeah, um, is because the d different factions uh, are not very well balanced. I believe that a mirror match is always more interesting and more balanced than any kind of um, unmirror match. Uh, generally speaking, Aeon is the most uh, powerful faction on in the game, and then it, 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 it of course can vary, but in the professional, uh, I don't know, 
uh, circuit, I guess. <laughs> Not really a circuit. Uh, professional uh, games. Uh, it kind of it, it holds true that Aeon is the most powerful, at least before the patch. And the patch uh, has arrived a couple of months ago, and it was completely random. It changed a couple of things. Um, changed how the starting builds work a bit and it was completely random and completely unexpected because everyone expected Supreme Commander 2 to be just done. Let's move on to versatility and replayability. The pre replayability for me of course is one of the one of the best things about this game. I have played this game for over uh, 1000 hours so the replayability for me obviously gets the top score however where this score has dropped for this game is when uh, the versatility the versatility especially on higher levels of play is not very uh, prominent you are basically stuck to the same meta opening or same kind of build um, unless you're going against lower level players where you can really enjoy and create and do all sorts of fun stuff. But if you're going somewhere even equal skill, you are basically confined to a couple of openings which basically you have to go with. And that is why the score takes a toll here. Uh, multiplayer is the most... Uh, it's more important than the story and the AI because if you're gonna continue playing a strategy game you will most likely continue playing it online and if you don't if there's no multiplayer I at least don't really play the game unless it's a really long game like Crusaders Kings and that is in my opinion exclusively um, a single player game but of course this is not a review about that game we're talking about Spring Commander 2 which is a short quick game usually when you're playing it competitively and with good players um, and the multiplayer in Spring Commander is very entertaining like I said the strategies the different strategies make it very interesting and when you have um, uh, dozens of experimentals and nukes and artillery flying at each other which is a huge has a huge potential of happening even on higher levels of play it is very interesting that next we have the epicness the epicness is in my opinion a key in uh, strategy games because um, just the scale of strategy games makes it so um, unbelievable and interesting. So Spring Commander is obviously very epic when you, like I said, when you have dozens of experimentals and air and all that stuff going on on the same battlefield from two or even more players, it, it is very, very epic. Especially when you can open with any kind of strategy and it is very very epic. Next uh, we have some bonus points. I have decided to give uh, Spring Commander some bonus points for visuals and design. Obviously the ability to zoom in and zoom out is very very great and it allows for some interesting uh, unit management. Also you can zoom in and see the details on these buildings. This, it's, it's pretty good and I don't think I even have my uh, settings on maximum and the design of the game I believe to be pretty good even though there are some bugs and um, even though Spring Commander isn't very even supported anymore but it is still a very interesting game next we have story a story can make or break as any kind of game especially well not especially uh, also including the strategy games uh, Spring Commander does not have a very strong story it's just something that was thrown in just because they could and I honestly have only played like four missions out of it because I got bored and I'd rather play multiplayer um, the AI is also something that can make a break a game uh, strategy game especially strategy game because games like uh, Supreme Commander well, not even Spring Commander, games like Civilization, let's say, multiplayer is a very important aspect 
because most of the time you'll be playing against AI. In Supreme Commander, AI is actually pretty okay. Um, I would even say my score is a bit low that I gave. Um, but regardless, uh, the AI is pretty good. It's definitely nothing great, but the the ability of you to set these different kind of modes for the AI is pretty cool and that also adds to the design I believe. So overall the game is pretty pretty good. I have obviously this is the game that I most um, cherish and I've played a lot. This is probably I played this game more than I have any all the other games combined and I played it competitively. I have a clan for it. It's insane. So the breakdown of points is as follows, epicness 2 points, balance 1 point, versatility 1.5, multiplayer 1.7, visual slash design is 0.7, story mode is 0.5, and AI is 0.5, which makes it a grand total of 7.2 out of 10. Now, my scale, I believe the one I've created here, is pretty harsh and takes a toll on every single miss, uh, missed thing and it also is a, supported by my idea that nothing is really perfect the strategy game is not perfect and it is great the score doesn't really reflect it because if you enjoy multiplayer and you enjoy the epicness of it you're not gonna care about the balance and the versatility and you have to remember that I'm coming from a point of view of a, um, I guess, semi-decent player in Supreme Commander 2, having to play quite a bit of it. So my review is obviously skewed in both directions. It is boosted by my love of the game, but it also detrimented by the fact that I take note of every little bug that I have encountered in those 1,000 hours and that those little imperfections so in my opinion a 7.2 out of 10 for on my scale is a very good score now we will see of course how these compare to other games that i'm reviewing and this is of course my first review but that is what i gave it for now and of course i might change it depending on what i see or what i learn or maybe they will resume support of this game so my final verdict on this game whether to buy or not i would actually not buy it now now it's there is no big point of buying this game the game is almost dead it is a summer 2013 and planetary annihilation is about to come out so if you are gonna rather if you're looking for something like supreme commander I would wait for Planetary Annihilation. Of course, uh, Supreme Commander 2 is very cheap, and you can probably get it on a sale for like three bucks. And then I would say go for it. It's a very good game, and if you enjoy it, enjoy it. There aren't a lot of players, so add those good friends, and you will enjoy. It. Well, you will most likely enjoy the game if you like. Um, epic strategy games with huge scales and the ability to zoom out and zoom in. Um, it's a very good game to enjoy with your friends and that is why I played it so much because I had friends that I played this with and it was great. So thank you very much for watching, I hope this helped and I will see you in future videos.